I'm Priscilla Barrera, the Battery Metals reporter with the Investing News Network. Welcome back to our monthly update, this time for the month of July. Let's start by looking at what happened in the cobalt space. At the end of June, a partial mine collapse was reported at Kamoto Copper's company, Copper Cobalt Mine in the DRC, leaving dozens of miners dead. In July, the discussion surrounding the many dangers faced by artisanal miners in the country, as well as the security issues faced by companies operating in the region, continued. Also in July, the London Metal Exchange added Huawei Cobalt to its list of approved brands for delivery against its physical contract. The company produces 25% of cobalt chemical products. In other company news, despite facing opposition from some investors, Australian miner Jerwa Mining will take over eCobol solution after majority of shareholders approve the transaction. The deal is valued at 57.6 million Canadian dollars, and shares of the company jumped over 21%. In July, INN published its Cobol market update for the second quarter, featuring top trends in the sector. Prices continue to be under pressure falling to its lowest level seen in many years for some products, according to analysts. Let's now look at what's been happening in the lithium space. In July, analysts at Morgan Stanley released a new report saying they expect prices to fall by 30% by 2025. Prices will continue their downtrend to reach $7,200 per ton as new technologies lower cost of production and keep the market oversupplied. Looking over to company news, Australian miners continue to strengthen their relationships throughout the supply chain. Pilbara Minerals sign an additional offtake deal with Great Wall Motors that is set to start in August. Sales volumes to the company are expected to be in the range of 15,000 to 20,000 dry metric tons during the second half of 2019. Pilbara Minerals was not the only Australian miner signing a deal with a Chinese firm. In July, Altura Mining struck an off-take agreement with Chinese lithium materials producer Jiangdong Rufu. Looking over to North America, shares of Numaska Lithium jumped after news that Palingur's group was considering a 600 million Canadian dollar investment in the company to develop the mine in Quebec. Numaska Lithium's share price was under pressure since February when the company announced a financing shortfall of 375 million Canadian dollars. In July, INN also published a lithium market update for the second quarter. You can check it out to learn more about market dynamics and what's ahead for the second half of the year. And that wraps up our July update. Join us next month for another recap. In the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. <laughs>